All right, now we look at the pipe. Now the pipe, yeah, well, let's see how that goes. Um, mesh separate, let's see if there's anything I could separate here. I built these end caps to be on that so that the caps cannot be removed. That was brilliant. Um, in this case, this could be separated from the nuts. That's good too. And this pipe's all by itself also. All right, well, I'm gonna look for things that are cylinders. This thing I could obviously never automatic map, I don't think. Oh, well that turned out pretty darn good. So I can go with that. I like that. I'll just have to stitch a few of these together. Too many seams. All right, so I'm just gonna stitch some stuff together, move and sew. And what I could do is stitch all of these together until they get too long and then I can cut them. So they're about that width. That's not too bad. I'll keep them that way. And what I'm looking for is putting seams only in areas that are hard edge. Like right here would be a good place to put a seam but right here would not be a good place to put a seam, okay? So you put seams in natural contours of inorganic objects, but not directly on the surface of flat areas. Case in point, uh, these edges right here go to this. I would never want a seam right in the middle of this object right here. That would be bad. So I will move and sew those. And move it down. And then attach the end part. Okay, move and sew those. Good. Now I think these parts will fit together. Let me control right click to edge loop and I'm just looking to see what that highlights. No, I could never attach those and I could probably never attach these either. Those edge loops uh, equal this one right here, so those got to remain flat. What's this stuff? Okay, these are the internal workings of the circle. Those could never fly. I don't like this little guy just hanging out here. He belongs here. So I'm just going to highlight that and hit move and sew. Get that guy where he needs to be. So this is about the lowest common denominator for this material or texture anyway. Um, that way I'm just going to apply look at it to see if it's flowing very nicely. It is. I don't see any bad seams. I need all these parts uniform to next to each other, so I'll do the layout. Now if you look, uh, the layout kind of failed there, because look at the squares here compared to the squares here. Those squares are also big here though, so before I even end up scaling them they were bad. In this case, I'm going to have to look at these faces, which are the strips. And getting them the same resolution as those. And it looks to me like they are two separate ones altogether. Here and here, compared to the bottom one. So this shell range is going to be scaled different than the other ones. Just to save time and energy and to be able to figure this out better, I'm going to make it so these are, 
this way. There we go, so that makes more sense. These can stay this way because they are this way in the viewport. And now those make sense. So just a little bit of scaling and putting back. If you look, that's darn near perfect. Um, I, I'm just going to upscale this one just a little bit because I know they're the same diameter. And that should be good for that piece. This piece again, uh, I, I could do automatic mapping, I could do cylindrical. Automatic mapping will allow me to have these separated. So it just saves me some time. Attach the material. I see that the material has rectangles in it, so I'm going to have to do one of these. And I'm only going to do these to the longer pieces. Now they're square. And then I'll grab all of them and shrink them all down uniformly. Uniformly shrinking things in Maya now is pretty difficult. <laughs> I'm going to get this and those to look about the same. So what happens here is this becomes my largest piece. It dictates the resolution across all pipes because all pipes are going to have the same material. So in this case I'm just worried about getting this on the 0 to 1 and then I'm going to have to change the other one. There we go. Get these two pieces out. All right, now I know that resolution. I'm going to go and change this resolution to match. There we go. Now those two match. Put all these over here. So I could probably get this one and this one on the same 0 to 1. This one, <laughs> if this automatically unmaps, I'll be surprised. Alright, so huge issues here. Huge. Uh, mainly because anytime I go to put these back together, I'm going to have some kind of problem with it. It's on a curve. So this is breaking into the organic section of UVs. Not inorganic. Uh, moving so. Alright, and this is how I use that. I'll go like this to get as much as I can put together. like that and I'll move and so that it's gonna look awful and rightfully so I'm going to take the lasso tool and grab my UVs try to look for the natural center of things and hit unfold okay then I'll do the same thing over on the other side all right perfect now if I attach this you'll see that all the squares are exactly the same. So as long, it doesn't matter where they're running, it doesn't, because if it's going to be a procedural texture anyway, uh, they can run in any direction, it doesn't really matter. As long as they're all the same. Okay, that one's done. Uh, let's get into these edges and start getting rid of some of these seams. I know about the ratio of these now. 
because I they're the same as before. But not yet. Not scaling those yet. Okay, those little bits aren't going to work out. Uh, I can find a home for this little guy. I don't like to keep it, any of those laying around. A lot of times I'll just hit move and sew and see where he goes. I see it right there. So that's a natural fit. All right, let's do a layout on it. And then let's take these and size them down so they match. Just a little bit there. Now I don't have to leave that weird looking shape there if I don't want to. I could kind of uh, put that at a different angle, but again, it's not going to really matter too much. I do have to make sure that these resolutions match, so I'll shrink this down. These are looking kind of rectangular now that I look at them. Okay. That's definitely a different change there now. Okay, and notice how I'm just kind of moving all these out of the way so they're not on top of each other. I haven't put them on the zero to one yet, and I'm going to wait till I get all the parts done. So I'll, I'll tackle this end cap in the next video.